Do you have less than 10 minutes to learn something new? The Latin Learner Podcast offers helpful information from experts in the school community on a wide variety of topics, ranging from social-emotional health to DEI efforts to learning strategies. The clock starts now, so let's get started. As a lifelong introvert, I remember feeling in the classroom I wasn't being the right kind of student. And they can write it all out. And then you can see this kid who's never said anything in class before has this amazing question that popped up on the board for everyone to see. Um, celebrate the fact that when you're given time to think, you really think deeply. Well, yeah, I'm Beth Manning, and I teach fifth grade science here at Latin. As a lifelong introvert, I remember feeling in the classroom I wasn't being the right kind of student. Um, so I know that I had that feeling a lot and I could see some of my students having that, you know, that they were uncomfortable in the class as well. And so when Susan Cain's book, Quiet, came out, uh, that was several years ago, it really highlighted the, um, the benefits that introverts can bring to a classroom and to a workplace. And so that really, I think, changed the conversation and made so many more people aware of the value that introverts have. So what are the common myths about introverts? One of the biggest ones, I think, is that they are broken extroverts, that they need somehow to fix themselves so that they're more extroverted to fit in. Um, you know, we hear all the time that quiet people need to come out of their shell, um, that they need to, you know, live life more, have more fun. Um, so they get this message so much that they, that they're doing everything wrong. They are broken and they need to be fixed. All they have to do is fix themselves, become extroverts. Um, but we know now, of course, that you know that's not really the case, right? They have so many gifts to bring that um, you know it's just a way of like you know, figuring out how can their natural te temperament be respected. Um, one big myth is that introverts don't like to talk, um, but the truth is they don't really like to make small talk. They like to talk about like important things. <laughs> and so, and especially like if you engage an introvert on a topic that they're really passionate about and that they really love, um, they, they won't let you get a word in edgewise and <laughs> talk a blue streak. Um, so that's a myth that they don't like to talk. Another common myth about introverts was that they maybe aren't really going to be good leaders. Um, that, you know, you have to be a big boisterous, loud person in order to be a leader. Um, but the truth is they've studied CEOs and found out that you know, an introverted CEO actually makes more money for the company, <laughs> maybe just by a little bit, but it's not a bad thing for a leader to be an introvert. Can you explain the difference between being an introvert and being shy? So the big difference is that shyness involves social anxiety and maybe a fear of negative judgment. So um, introverts might simply not have something to contribute at the time and be feeling inside perfectly fine about that. Somebody who's shy might not be contributing to a conversation because they're really worried about what other people are going to think about them. So uh, it's it's two different reasons to be quiet. Um, and so you know, a shy person might be an introvert and they might not be. An introvert might be shy or not. How does the brain process experiences and information differently for introverts versus extroverts? So it turns out that there are actually brain differences, and this is something I didn't know. Apparently, introverts are more sensitive to dopamine, a neurotransmitter. So they require less dopamine to be like happy and content. So sitting in a corner and reading or just being quiet with their thoughts is going to give them enough dopamine to be content. Um, too much dopamine can be really overstimulating for an introvert, so that's why maybe if they've you know, spent time in the gym at recess or spent time in some busy, loud classroom, they're going to be really overstimulated because they've got all this way too much dopamine going on. And so they're going to need some time to relax and recover from that in a quiet space. Um, extroverts, however, they um, kind of crave dopamine, like they can handle a lot of it. And so they oftentimes need to do something that will induce adrenaline to make that happen. So a lot of times they're going to be the ones, the extroverts are going to be wanting and craving more stimulation. So like the amount of stimulation introverts and extroverts can handle is really different. Um, but apparently also the way your brain processes information is different. So an extrovert might get a stimulus and then 
it goes straight to brain processing and maybe that processing happens while they're talking. An introvert, however, like the, you have the stimulus and then it starts to, the stimulus has to go through long-term memory first. And then it has to go through the planning portion of the brain. And only after those things happen can they really start to process what has happened. So that takes time. And so that's why introverts need time, but it's also often why you know, once they get that time, they come up with really amazing analysis. So I think one thing that's really helpful for teachers is to think about introversion versus extroversion as just another way to differentiate in the classroom. So we know we have all these different kinds of learners, just introvert, extrovert is another kind of learner. So one of the biggest ones that's easy for like almost anyone to do, I think, is just wait time. Um, and that is one of the really well-researched classroom practices as well. It shows that like if a teacher asks a question in a whole class instruction situation and you know first hands go up, you know a lot of teachers will just pick on you know the first hands that go up. Um, but if you wait even like three seconds, some people will even say 10 seconds, which feels like an eternity in the classroom, uh, you're going to get way more hands going up. And those quiet kids who've had that extra few seconds to think are now going to have a really great answer that they're going to want to share. So that's a really easy one. It's just wait time. And that's something that, you know, even though I know this too, it's just, it can be hard to implement. You just always have to remember, okay, I'm going to wait. Um, something that is, I really like about all this technology that we have access to now is uh, the, all sorts of digital collaboration can be really helpful for introverts. So for example, like you can have these digital cork boards where you can ask a question to the class and then instead of just waiting for kids to raise hands and share that way, you can have them answer it on their iPads and then it could show up on the screen. And so having that time for kids to, you know, answer, we're all gonna be quiet now when you answer this question and then they can write it all out. And then you can see this kid who's never said anything in class before has this amazing question that popped up on the board for everyone to see. So I feel like there's so much technology that can really help these introverts shine and help their ideas and their questions be seen. Whereas if you just, you know, have a classroom where it's the loudest person, they're never gonna be seen in that way. How can parents support their introverted students? I feel like having uh, conversations with the students about how these things that maybe some people perceive as weaknesses can be flipped around to strengths. So in, you can think about embracing your natural tendencies, right? Um, celebrate the fact that when you're given time to think, you really think deeply and you see details that other people don't see. And um, you can help them realize that they are not flawed or defective. This is just how they are. And there are techniques that they can do to survive being in an extroverted world. So um, there are strategies for survival in a classroom. So one good one that Susan Cain says in her book, Quiet, um, you think beforehand, before you go to class, you know what the class is going to be about and you prepare what you're gonna, what you're gonna say. You can go in right away knowing what you're gonna say, plan in advance, and so then you can get your thoughts out there at the beginning. And that has a, actually a really nice advantage in that a lot of times the person who speaks first in the class is the one who's like looked up to and seen as a leader. Um, so like simply like having a technique like that where you're preparing in advance um, to, to, to say something might help out an introvert and that's something parents can maybe help their kids with. How do you foster collaboration between extrovert and introverted students? So any kind of structure or managed roles is going to help with fostering uh, collaboration between students. So if you can assign any kind of roles, common kinds of roles for a teacher to assign might be like a recorder, a timekeeper, a materials manager, and a group speaker. Like even an introvert can be a group speaker and if they're assigned that role, they'll take it really seriously and they'll be able to prepare for it and then be a great group speaker. Um, but it's if they don't get assigned that role, then they might not feel comfortable taking that on because one thing introverts don't really like to do is they don't like to interrupt or they don't know how to interrupt. So any kind, anytime you can give them structure where now's your time to talk, now's your time to listen, that can be really helpful. So anytime you like give these permissions and structure to the introverts, they're, they're definitely gonna be able to work with the extroverts. How can people learn more and get more resources? Um, so I think Susan Kane is really the one who started this conversation several years ago. So 
she's got a couple of books now. Her first one was Quiet, and then she's got one that's geared towards just towards students. And then she also has an amazing website, which is like this whole world for introverts and promoting the greatness of introverts. Also, um, I found that one book that was really helpful for me learning about this was by Quiet Kids Count by Chrissy Romano Aravido. And I just feel like that was packed full of practical tips for teachers. Thank you for joining us for this episode of the Latin Learner Podcast. Check out other episodes on our website at latinschool.org slash podcast.